Hey, how's everybody doing today? Good afternoon. Hello, Hello. Marco. Hey, fine. Hey, good, <laughs> good to see everybody. Welcome back to the Contrarians. We have uh, an awesome little panel today, and uh, some of these folks are Patreon members, and we voted on an album that we're going to talk about as part of our Dark Horse album series. Today, the band is Yes, and the album is Big Generator. So I'm going to quickly go over a brief amount of research that I did, and then we'll throw it over to the panel and we'll get everybody's opinion on the album. We'll rate it out of 10. And uh, if you could let us know where we can find you. Uh, okay. So this album came out in 1987. Um, it was the last studio album to receive a platinum certification in the U S and there were some pretty big hits off of this album in the States. Uh, love will find a way shoot high aim low rhythm of love were the singles. Um, According to Ultimate Classic Rock, who ranked the Yes albums, uh, Big Generator comes in at nine, at 18. Uh, they say, in which Yes try and for the most part fail to recapture the art pop magic of their 1983 blockbuster 90125, Big Generator has all of the surface level similarities. Trevor Horn's slicker than slick production, arena tailored guitar riffs, sparkly modern rhythms and set synths, but despite their Immediacy of tracks like Rhythm of Love and Big Generator, the formula feels decidedly less fresh on the round two. Uh, the album is more intriguing on longer form pieces like Shoot, High, Aim, Low, and I'm Running, with Yes nodding to the widescreen arrangements of their prog roots. Their number one is close to the edge. Prog Sphere rate, uh, rated all the Yes albums. They put Big Generator at number 15. They said Big Generator was released four years after 90125, and two of those two years were spent uh, working on it. Clearly, the honeymoon period brought on by Trevor Rabin was over by, his, by this point. Tony Kay and Trevor Horn had been at each other's throats, and John Anderson was expressing doubt around the direction the, the band was taking. It's this sort of artistic division that first sent Yes on the downward slope with Tormato and Big Generator saw fit to reproduce this scenario with their pop era. It's undeniably a weaker album than 90125, even possibly the first album the band released, I might consider truly weak. Much like Tormato, though, Big Generator has some strong moments. It's not enough to earn a recommendation, but it's enough to deserve some sort of defense against some of the worst album ever comments made against it. Progsphere's number one was Relayer. Um, All Music gave the album two stars and said not as successful as its predecessor, probably because the singles Love Will Find A Way and Rhythm Of Love couldn't match Owner Of A Lonely Heart. From the previous LP, even if they were favorites on AOR radio at the time, Yes asserted itself more here. The band reverted more to its old style, making for some confusion. Nevertheless, this album was Yes's last major hit. Uh, a quick user review uh, gave it two stars. Uh, this album was a big misfire. Only shoot high, aim low actually works. For everything else, the songwriting is simply not compelling enough, and the slick production can't save it. The three love songs are cheesy and better suited for a kid's movie soundtrack than a rock album. The title track, Final Eyes and I'm Running Go Nowhere, Holy Lamb is Anderson at his worst. To show the drop off between this album and its pre predecessor, 90125, Outtake, Make It Easy would have been the second best track were it on here instead. Uh, and, and another quick user review gave the album 4.5 stars with an interesting review and he said, this is the only Yes album I own and would want to own. This is so different to their mu uh, other music, and it's great to listen to with Shoot High, Aim Low being my favorite track. So there's some uh, interesting reviews, definitely some mixed reviews, but also some success with uh, album sales and singles. And uh, I'm going to throw it over to Todd first. Let us know what you think about the album, what you rated out of 10, and if we can find you anywhere quickly. Thanks, Todd. Okay. Well, I like the album quite a bit. Uh, my opinion of it has changed over the years, and it's kind of gone up and down a couple of times. But um, Rabin was apparently feeling a lot of pressure to have another hit, and uh, which he resented. And uh, Anderson wanted the band to be a little bit more adventurous. And uh, Trevor Horn disagreed with that and actually tried to keep Anderson away from the writing sessions. And a lot has been said about uh, Trevor Horn being like a, this genius of, of rock music. But I think that's a terrible idea to, to try to keep John Anderson away from the writing sessions of a Yes album. Um, John Anderson may be overbearing and difficult to work with, but when he drives, that's when you get, all, in my opinion, that's when you get all of the best music. But... Um, Raven apparently had a lot of songs that he that were ready to go, but he didn't feel comfortable pushing them on the band because he envisioned it as being more of a group effort kind of a thing. 
Um, Tony Kay and Trevor Horn didn't get along. Trevor Horn and John Anderson didn't get along. Uh, uh, apparently, Tony Kay's uh, parts were recorded with him on a different floor of the studio to keep him away from uh, Trevor Horn. Uh, apparently, Raven played a lot of the keyboards. And uh, it was recorded at a location in Italy that Raven picked out, and and uh, Squire and Trevor Horn thought that he picked it out just so they could save money, and he insisted that wasn't the the, the case. But apparently, Raven wanted it moved to London, and then they couldn't finish in London, and Raven walked away. I'm I'm sorry, uh, uh, Trevor Horn wanted it recorded in London, and Trevor Horn walked away from the project before it moved to Los Angeles. But and that's where Paul De Villiers comes in in the production credits. He was the uh, one of the uh, tour engineers for uh, 90125. But anyway, um, I like this record. Um, I think it, it, when you read about the troubles that they had making it, I think that that kind of, you kind of go, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what you get when that happens. Um, I think Rhythm of Love is pretty good. Um, it's not, it doesn't blow me away, but I don't think it's embarrassing or anything like that. I went through a lot of the time since this came out really loving Big Generator. And I like it le- a little bit less now, but I've always kind of liked it. I feel like if that was a new band that came out with that song, that it would everybody would think it was really cool. Um, <laughs> a lot of the things in it are really dated, but it doesn't it doesn't doesn't bother me. Um, Shoot high and low, I think, is really good. I liked that immediately when it came out, and then spent some time thinking that it was overrated because a lot of people would talk about how that's the best song on the album and it's the only good song on the album, which I didn't agree. Um, Almost like love, the close of side one. Everybody kind of the, the 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 consensus is that that's the worst song. Um, that's probably true. But in the uh, as as the years have gone by, and especially recently, when I've listened to it, I thought, you know what, it really isn't that bad. Um, I like the percussive uh, way that uh, Anderson sings it with the kind of the rhythmic drive, and it kind of reminds me of some of Anderson's best um, solo work. Um, the horns don't bother me, but that's what I always say, horns don't ever bother, horn arrangements don't ever bother me. <laughs> Love will find a way. I think is pretty good. Um, I like the, uh, I like the way the drums sound on this song. I, I think it, I think that, that, that it, that, that the song uh, rocks pretty well and it kind of chugs along and in kind of a satisfying way. Um, when the album came out, I thought finalize was uh, just spectacular. And I went head over heels over it. And I, uh, don't feel that way as much now, but I think Finalize is pretty good. Um, Trevor Rabin has been quoted as saying that there are moments in Finalize that are, quote, cringy. Um, I don't particularly think that. Um, I kind of thought that twenty that a 90125 was a little bit, as much as I like 90125, and I'm happy that it brought them you know, back to uh, having some successful albums again, I felt like 90125 was a little bit lacking in the Yes Magic category as far as, you know, having songs like, you know, things that were on uh, uh, Going for the One, like Turn of the Century and Awaken and stuff like that. And I feel like, I feel like uh, Finalize and I'm Running in Holy Lamb kind of bring them back towards that a little bit. Um, I think I'm running is great. I think it, it, it sounds really good. I, I like, uh, the way, uh, I like the arrangements. I like the way it's, it's got a lot of energy and changes styles. And, um, at the time it was much better than what I was expecting to come out as, you know, the album that followed up, uh, 90125 and, um, Holy Lamb, I don't think is all there. I think there's more of that song exists. And my, my speculation is that it was, Anderson was reined in. Uh, Rabin has said since that he envisioned Holy, Holy Lamb having a, an opening and a closing, and the part that ended up being on the album ended, you know, would be something in the middle. But um, one thing that I thought I remembered hearing about this album was that it moved from studio to studio, and it was the tape had so many passes on it that apparently the, the tape wore out. And some of the parts had to be re-recorded. I, the, I couldn't find that. I thought I remembered hearing that, but I did find something about apparently Alan's drums on "I'm Running" were deemed unusable for whatever reason, and he had to re-record them all. So I don't know whether that's part of that. If anybody has any info on that, or if somebody wants to put something in the comments, I just couldn't find the source of that. But I remember hearing that. Um, ultimately, I think Big Generator is is an more interesting listen than 90125 is. Um, 
I hover, I hover between a seven and an eight, but I think I'm going to give it an eight. Um, if they really were having trouble with the master tape, the, 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 the final product actually came out sounding pretty good in my opinion. Um, you can find me here at, uh, at uh, the contrarians also uh, rush fans. We're doing some really fun things on rush fans uh, lately. Uh, Grant's rock warehouse, where we just uh, did an interview with the, the with the uh, lead singer of the Athens legendary Athens band Pylon and that Vanessa Briscoe. Hey, that comes out very soon. Um, it comes out the night that we're recording this, but uh, I've also been on Ryan's final destination and rock day dream nation. And also uh, my music corner, John Clauser's channel. Nice, nice shirt, by the way, Todd. Thank you. Looking good. <laughs> so I hear these are available. They are available. T public link, link in the description. So your um your eight is actually a little bit lower than what you would have gave it when it came out. Uh Is yeah, you, yeah. You when I you when liked it, came, it a little bit better when it came out. When I came, when it came out, I really flipped over finalize and I'm running. I thought they were just. I like they were. I thought they were much more like what I wanted. Yes, to do more so than nine one two five. Nice. So we start off with a high number. I'm going to actually throw it over to Martin next. So Martin, uh, let us know what you think about Big Generator, what you rank it out of 10, and where we can find you. Yeah, all right. Um, just a couple things to point out. I've, I've been in this mode lately when, when doing books, uh, looking at when things kind of went platinum and all that stuff. So 90125 is triple platinum, but it was platinum by January 84. It wasn't triple platinum until 98. So they're, they're going into this with a, a quite a successful album, but not a super crazy successful album. But Big Generator goes gold immediately and platinum pretty fast as well by April 29th, 1988. So yeah, it was a, a big album for them. Just show here's my, here's my vinyl copy with the hype sticker on it. And uh, I realize I don't have a CD of it. Here's here's, but I do have a second vinyl copy of it. And um, there's the Rhythm of Love single. And really don't like that album cover. Apparently that album cover was a de design by John Anderson and everybody it says, you know, was was kind of uncomfortable and he's point pointing out this thing. And here's a here's a double bootleg album I have of it where they only do love love uh, will find a way uh, on it. Uh, yeah, that's the only the only track that they they put on this thing. So um so yeah, I'm not a big fan of this record. Um, I really, my least favorite songs on it actually are the first two. And as I'll mention, um, well, I'll, I'll take a look at this now just for a little more background. So in this Yes Visual Biography 2, the follow-up to one, um, you know, I've got a few quotes from the guys in it. And Trevor Raven, Raven says, I enjoyed every album we did together. Big Generator was emotionally a very difficult album. Trevor Horn, of course, says that it was warring factions trying to kill each other, right? Um, but it all, um, it all worked with the guitars and the keyboards. But Big Generator, we had to make things uh, work. And we learned that Trevor Horn, who produced the other album, was going to be involved. And I was wondering how it was going to work. The songs were not as good, but I still enjoyed making those songs. And I love playing them live. But yes, we started Big Generator after 90125. The idea was to go in with the same team, which we did, and it just didn't really work out. So we didn't continue with Trevor Horn. After trying for ages, nothing much seemed to be happening. So we decided to carry on without him. That took a lot of time. Let me see. Uh, eventually, it landed on my lap, and it took over two months to mix. Uh, so the intention was to have it come out at least a year before it did. Um, let's see what else did uh, Rick Wakeman's. Uh, well, okay. So Rick's not in the band, but he says, not that keen on big generator to me, big generator sounds as if it's been produced 500 times and remixed 500 times. And even though there's some good stuff, it sounds tired to me. And it's interesting in talking to the guys, that's exactly what it was. It got done over and over and over. Alan white says, um, uh, 90125 had more of a rock approach, even though we had yes elements in amongst them. It was one of our most successful albums of all because it happened at the right time don't over lonely heart um but big generator sure big generator had some material that was not was as good as some of the material nine one two five and did pretty good just a different album uh, let me get to this part he goes uh uh at one point he says big generator would be dare i say it heavy metalish but still was a uh, a lot of great songs on it was a little bit heavier although nine one two five had uh, moments of that. Um, so basically, I don't like Rhythm of Love and Big Generator because I don't like Heavy Yes, uh, particularly, except for Machine Messiah. Um, but I don't like these kind of menacing, big 80s kind of urban chords that you get on on either of those two songs. I do like Shoot High, Aim Low. I always like that one. Um, I like the halftime groove to it. And I think that one 
sort of progressive flourish fill that always goes through my head is a little bit of a metaphor for the problems with this album. It's just like way too overdressed up, right? Um, almost like love. I'm not a big fan of that with the horns and all that. Love will find a way. I'm, I'm kind of good with that one. Um, I, I don't think it's particularly maudlin. I mean, yeah, John Anderson is maudlin anyways, uh, but I love that whole strings arrangement to, to start it off and the big blocky chords. I'm fine with it. Finalize, even though it's kind of a dumb pun. Um, to me, that's the first true yes song on it. Um, and Todd, exactly same, same as you. I, I really like that one a lot. I, it's, I, I, I find this side better. I'm even finding like most of I'm running, it gets a lot of abuse for the Caribbean-ness of it or whatever, but um, there's not really that much of that in it. I think it's a true yes song as well. And Holy Lamb, I think is a true yes song because it's down that whole, that whole religious culty John Anderson cosmic uh, convergence or whatever he did it for harmonic convergence, right? Um, or song for harmonic convergence uh, i guess is in brackets on it but yeah it was all about that and it's very john anderson so i i think basically i like the whole second side but my bad memories of this album are because i really don't like rhythm of love and big generator i just don't like those that the, the kind of big uh big you know like i say menacing sounding yes menacing and yes don't go together for me don't like the drum sounds anywhere on this album i just hate that huge snappy and reverby snare sound that's everywhere all throughout this album um and yeah the, the graphics tick me off as well it's hard to read it's so 80s with the 80s colors and all that so i was not a big fan of this album i think most people most yes fans i think find that the band um came back in a big way with talk talk is almost like their queen innuendo i think in a way um so i think a lot of people like talk more than big Gen generator but i definitely Drank the Kool Aid and was all in on nine hundred one two five. I loved that album. Like I say, I saw the tour. Um, it was it was actually really really cool. So so yeah, not not a huge fan. Um, yeah, but side side two is definitely a lot better than side one. I'm gonna go on this. Uh, I would say, um, I think I'm gonna go five out of ten on the album. There you go. So we got a low score to beat and a high score to beat. We'll see if we go lower than five or higher than eight. We can find you at martinpopoff.com. Yeah, and uh, I do have about I do have about a box of these left, and I've got some of the the first one as well. I think I can get more, but all, all of these I I try to not keep a huge supply because uh, I have to get them from the UK. They're heavy, they're expensive, but uh, yeah, and uh, that's that's better than the other visual biographies in that it is all it's based on the time in a word book, so it's all it's stuffed with quotes. It's re-edited and fixed up and a few other things added and then, and then extended to on the end. So it's, it's a lot of words at the same time. And hence that's why there's two of them. Awesome. Thanks, Martin. I'm going to throw it over to a new face in the crowd. Um, you may have seen Davey on some other shows, um, but this is Davey's first appearance on the contrarian. So let's welcome Davey and tell yes, us what you think absolutely. about Good to see you. Tell us what you think about Big Generator, what you rated out of 10 and where we can find you. Well, thank you. It's nice to be seen. Um, so I'm, I guess, contrarian with uh, yes in general because my favourite yes is 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 drama, and um, that's my favourite record. I love um, Machine Saya and, and, and Into the Light because it came from Buggle stuff, and that's that's kind of my jam. With that. I really like um, Trevor Horn. I think he's always been one of my one of my faves. And then obviously when you move into the production year with Trevor with uh, with John back and whatnot, when they uh, they actually did did let him meet John. And Anderson finally after lying to him for long enough and uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, an odd one to revisit this because I've always liked um, I always want to say being a 90s kid uh, 90210 but um, 90125 um, and revisiting this I actually had a much better time with it than I remembered but the lows are lower and the highs are higher. That's that's kind of how I'd how I'd say it. Um, I'm really with Martin on those first two. Uh, Rhythm of Love, I think, is a complete shambles of a single. I don't think it's the right single to release. Um, I think it sounds like a, a half decent yes follow up to the previous album. If the previous album had been 1985, not 1987, um, and I think Big January to the title track is it's just owner of a lonely heart. I mean, it's even got the da 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 da, da you know, I mean, there's nothing in there that's that's new or fresh. Um, and that that comes back to one of my problems with Yes overall is that 
when people call them prog, um, I always think, yeah, but they don't often progress. That's my major problem with how they always run back to the, oh, the people didn't like that last one. Let's go back to um, to what they actually like. Let's get Roger to pull out one of his prints and put that on the cover and let them know that we're back to basics. Um, but the good news is in this album, I think there's a really great, and I mean a genuinely great Yes EP, um, and it almost runs in order. Um, I'm shoot high and low, should at seven minutes long meander because it doesn't really have many, it's not like other Yes epics where there's big dips and you know, valleys and troughs. It, it kind of just has this feel it's almost a mood piece that, that doesn't it doesn't take you on a particularly exciting journey but it does it's a bit like um robin trower's long misty days in that regard where it stays of a piece for the whole seven minutes but it's an it's a an enticing hypnotic seven minutes um love will find a way uh, sorry not to skip almost like love um i know trevor raven hates that song he thinks it's um his to studio, um, I think that's um, that's far too um, hard on himself because nobody's ever been as bad as, as Phil Collins' uh, solo career. Um, but sorry, Phil. Um, but um, I just think that almost Little love is is a really decent pop song, just with some production mistakes that could have been corrected possibly if they had a bit more stability in the band at the time, but as we know, just wasn't to be. Um, pass from pillar to post. Um, love will find a way. I think it's actually a really good, you know, I love the, um, the two classical moments on this. I mean, the whole thing opens with this um, piece that's a bit like um, uh, Stravinsky's right, um, right, Rates of Spring, and then Love will find a way sounds like uh, Rachmaninoff at the start. I think they used a um, a, a local Brooklyn teen choir or some uh, teen uh, orchestra for that piece. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's the only two parts of this album that feature that. I, I kind of like a bit more of that on here rather than let's just get Trevor to do some more guitars. But when you really look into it, it feels like you have these two warring factions and Trevor Rabin's kind of in the middle just saying, this is great, I've got a playground here. So he's just doing all the guitar histrionics that he wants because the other two factions are against each other. And that really shows up in Final Eyes, which I do like. I'm not a massive John Anderson fan. In fact, Elias of Sun, Hello, oh, that's so bad it hurts my feelings. But um, to be honest, when it comes to Final Eyes, it... it, it it's a really nice little start. And then I love the guitar and I thought, wow, wow, why am I loving this guitar so much? And then I thought, because Prince did exactly the same guitar solo on Purple Rain. That's why I really love that guitar on, on um, Final Eyes. But it still didn't detract from my enjoyment of it because if you're going to steal, you might as well steal from somebody good. So I'm happy with that. Um, I'm running again, um, like we've previously said, that was one of the ones that was kind of half lost almost between between producers um, and I think Trevor Rabin actually had to reproduce the drums himself I don't even think Alan was available to, to come back for that Holy Lamb again I'm, yeah when John when John goes into his flowing white robe music I'm not particularly interested put it that way um, you know it feels like he should be handing out leaflets somewhere rather than making music um, but when again the highs are high the low is a low but I think the highs and again I don't want to be I don't want it to be too hyperbolic but I think the highs maybe even a little bit higher than some of the highs on this which I think was just propelled by an absolutely massive single um, and especially in the UK these were actually of a piece because this sort of this didn't actually do as well in the UK as um, did in America. It was not a top 10 album. Owner of a Lonely Heart was not a top 20 single. Um, so this was every bit as successful. It got to just about the same album position. So um, really the UK didn't come back until Union. Um, and you know, probably, probably wish they hadn't, but regardless, the tour was good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot happier with, with um, Big Generator. But I'd quite like to make my own EP of it. I guess I need to call it Little Generator, but I suppose that's where I land on it. There's a great EP in here. Um, again, eight tracks. I think some of them do go on too long, but again, I think we can probably put some of that down to 
all the fighting, all the studio running about, it must have been like the Marx Brothers behind the scenes. Um, so I suppose they did stretch a few instrumental parts out to try and fill the LP length. So yeah, I don't think, I think if you give that a different album cover and whatnot, I don't think it's it's as dated um, as as, um, as some people would let on. And I'll take it over talk any day of the week. Absolutely any day of the week. So there you go. Now, I'm sorry, you can find me at... Um, um, uh, Scotland, uh, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. But uh, you know, um, Davies Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. Um, I, I can barely remember the name, so good luck for you. But um, I was thinking the comment, um, just as it sounds, it's movies and it's music. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. That was hey, my monologue. You. What's your rating out of ten? My rating out of 10 is, I don't think I can go too high because I did say that I think it's an EP's worth of great material on an album, but I don't think there's any real stinkers, so I'm, I'm not going to be too low. I'm not just going to pick the number of good tracks. So I'll maybe give it a 6. 6 out of 10. Nice. Nice, solid rating. Excellent debut, Davey. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Bicycle Legs next. Why don't you let us know what you think about the album, and, uh, rate out of 10, and where we can find you. Yep. Thank you. Um, well, there's my final copy. Uh, it's had the, you can see where the pipe sticker was taken off it at some stage. Um, look, I loved 90125. I think that album's wonderful. It's, it doesn't sound like previous yes. It doesn't have that progginess 90125. But the songs are really, really good. And what I always loved about 90125, which I think this album lacks a little bit, is 90125 has so much beautiful, close harmony singing between John Anderson and Chris Squire. And that is one of my favorite things in any Yes album, is hearing those two singing together. Um, but this album, I mean, they took way too long to get it out. Um, you know, I mean, 90125 came out, what, late 83? Um, and then this didn't come out until 87. So, you know, three and a half, four years apart, too long. Uh, and then secondly, I don't think the songs are as strong. I think this is almost two different records trying to fight each other to be the, the one record. Um, there's the, the, the attempts for sort of the commercial, you know, let's have another owner of a lonely heart. And then there's the let's try and go back into more traditional yes territory. And those two seem to be sort of conflicting on this album. But having said that, I mean, Rhythm of Love, I actually don't mind. I think it's a decent single. It's no owner of a lonely heart, but I think it's quite a good catchy single. Um Big Generator, the title track, I've never liked. I've always thought that it sounds really messy. It's like just bits and pieces kind of thrown together without actually turning it into a proper song. Um, Shoot High, Aim Low is, oh, sorry. My cat is pulling out my earpiece. Um, <laughs> Um, Shoot High, Aim Low is a, a really good song. Um, it probably could have been a little shorter, but I like the, the sort of two parts where you have like, um, you, you have almost, it's almost like a little bit of a play where you've got John Anderson doing one bit and then you've got Trevor Rabin sort of doing almost a call and response kind of thing. Um, and then Almost Like Love, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that song. Um, although I do think the the quieter sort of verse parts almost sound like one or two things that came a little bit later in the studio tracks on Keys to Ascension even. Um, it's got a little bit of that sound to it. But um, I definitely agree with, um, I think it was Martin, who said that side two is better than side one. Um, side two is definitely a better, uh, better thing. Although love will find a way good single, but probably not a good yes song. I think it would have been better if it had 
been used the way it was originally meant to be used as a Stevie Nicks song. I think it would have worked better as a Stevie Nicks song than a Yes song. But um, it's a good song. I just don't think it fits well in the Yes oeuvre, as it were. But then the last three tracks, I think, are the probably my favourite three tracks on the album. Um, Finalise is wonderful. Um it definitely has that bit, yes, sound, the, the person to person, woman to man, that part. When when John is singing that, I really feel like I'm listening to yes. Um, I'm Running is a good song, up tempo. Um, and then Holy Lamb. I love Holy Lamb. I, I, I'm a sucker for John when he gets into his white robes, as Debbie <laughs> put it. Um, I like that stuff, you know, so I was glad to hear, um, even if it's only for three minutes and I do agree with, um, whoever said that they felt like it had been cut down from something else. Was it Todd? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's still, I, I, I appreciate, you know, John being able to have his head, even if it was only for three minutes at the end of the album. So, all in all, I don't think this is anywhere near as good an album as 90125 was. Um, I don't think it's as bad as a couple of other Yes albums. Um, no, not naming any names. <laughs> um, but um, all in all, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Um, now, you can find me. I have my own channel. It's simply called Bicycle Legs. I just recently did a Yes video, in fact, where I uh, uh, defended Tormato because I feel like I actually had a couple of people in my uh, comments suggest that I do an in defense of Tormato. So, um, yeah, I, I just recently did that. Um, you can also find me here. I just did a show on Grant's Rock Warehouse as well, where we, we talked about Devo songs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, but what would your cat rate Big Generator out of 10? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she cares. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, I just wanted to mention this is kind of cool, eh? That they, on the inner sleeve, they put 90522, right? Dash one, which is the, the LP code, right? Yeah. I'm going to throw it over to Rand next, who I know, yes, is one of his favorite bands, so we're glad to have you, Rand. Uh, let us know what you think about this album in particular, what you rate out of 10, and if we can find you anywhere. Okay, uh, thank you for, for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I, I'm trying to figure out, how do I begin this after what everybody said? I'm going to start by saying, where did the title come from? Did anybody ever ask that question? Does anyone know? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, I read that. I've read uh, that too. Yeah, the thing about I, I guess somebody was looking at the video screen, or somebody was in the video screen with a quote, and then one of the guys noticed this quote from the video screen. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll yeah. show you what that is. Okay. Oh, this DVD. Yeah. When it first came out on VHS, okay, you didn't have the option to turn off the special effects, and they do a lot of. Uh, like a 50s kind of uh, thing you'd see in school, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, like one of those uh, uh, instructional uh, uh, movies that they would show in school where they were trying to teach you some sort of a morality or something. Well, anyway, there's this young girl that's trying to get her boyfriend excited about dancing to rock music, and it turns out it's going to be yes, and the dad is sitting there smoking a pipe, and right at the very end of it, he says, the rhythm of big generators, huh? Hmm. And then the next album is called Big Generator. Now, I just put that together. When I watched it, I went, ah, that's where they got it. <laughs> yeah, apparently Trevor, Horn, Trevor Rabin liked that, and it stuck yeah. in his head. Yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, and another thing, too, as far as them waiting till 87, I was frustrated, too. But let me tell you something. They toured the world for two yeah. years. Two-year tour, yeah. That's a long time, and it's hard to write a new album while you're doing that. And um, so, okay, well, we'll get to the record. Uh, if you bought the cassette or the CD, you get this cover. 
And of course, if you bought the LP, you would get this cover. So why is this a CD? <laughs> it's out of Japan. It was a special uh, issue out of 1999 from a company called Pacific Microsonics. And they were doing these remasters and I bought them all because, you know, I had to have them. But anyways, uh, I like this album. I actually prefer it to 90125. My problem with 90125 is there's hardly a lick of prog on it. I mean, this cinema is progressive, but it's very short. The beginning of changes and the end of changes is progressive. And that's it. The rest is a pop album. And all the songs were brought in by Trevor Raven. To me, it's not a yes album. They just added John's voice on it. And I love Chris Squire's playing on it stuff. And as far as Martin saying that it's a heavy, heavy album, the beginning, Rhythm of Love, this is the first time we hear Chris Squire playing a six-string carbon bass. It's got a very low string on it. And, uh, yeah, I hate that song. I, I am not into that song at all. But I do like Big Generator. And I'll tell you why, for two reasons. One, Chris detuned his bass to very low A, and the first time he played it, he blew his speakers up which I think is a cool trivia. And I like the vocals on it. They kind of remind me of Manhattan Transfer on acid. Um, <laughs> but I think it's a cool song. I don't like Shoot High, Aim Low. I've always thought that is boring, boring, boring. I've never liked that song. I love Almost Like Love just because it's not boring, boring, boring. It rocks. And it's got a good message, I think. And Love Will Find a Way... I remember seeing that on MTV for, for about two weeks, you know, and I noticed that uh, they're playing outside near an RV and a campground. It's a really weird video. I've never been a fan of that. It's a really weird video, right? Absolutely adore Finalized. To me, that's the best song on the album. I really love that tune. It's the most yes sounding song on there, in my opinion. And look, I've been a fan since 1971 when I first heard the yes album. And I love I'm Running. I think the opening uh, bass line is just absolutely killer. And if you want to see him, play, uh, Chris, play, play that live, uh, check out on YouTube. It's probably called Star Licks. Chris Squire, Star Licks. He pulls the bass out and shows the riff and shows the guy he's interviewing, in, in, interviewing him how to play it. It's pretty cool. Because I missed two tours for this band. It was Big Generator and Drama. I saw all the other ones, so... Holy Lamb, yeah, it's okay. I think I think John could have played Holy Lamb all by himself. I, to me, I doubt that's yes. I think that is John doing everything because there's nothing going on very special there. I don't hear any guitar or anything going like that. And it's just keyboard pads and some drumming. John can do all that. I, he proved it on Elias of Sun Hillow. And I love John Andrews. He's, he's my absolute favorite. He's my absolute favorite singer along with Peter Gabriel. But, you know, I'm going to give this a seven because I dig this album. I don't have a problem with it. I wish I would have seen it live. I saw the number. Excellent. And Thanks. you can find me on Rand Anthony Kelly on YouTube. I, I am currently doing a talking about my experiences with um, the Beatles U.S. albums release with uh, Ryan Gavalier and uh, Grant Arthur. And uh, we just did episode three yesterday, something new and hard days night. And uh, next Tuesday, we're going to do Beatles 65 and we're going to do 19 total. And after that, we're doing yes, every freaking album, including Anderson for Wakeman Howe, because it's on my channel and I've decided to do that. To me, that is a yes album. Nice. Chris was invited. He just turned it down. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Hopefully this episode will be out by the time your Yes series comes out. And I do these music projects where I play everything by myself, and I call it One Rand Band. And um, I'm going to do another one. It's, it's time. I got to get, get back into my studio and start doing stuff. But I love, I love uh, playing around with music. I just I, I eat, live, eat, breathe music constantly. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rand. Yeah. I'm going to throw for it over to... I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Always a pleasure to have you. All of you. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to last, certainly never least. We got Reed. Tell us what you think of the album. Rate it out of 10. And if we can find you anywhere. Thanks, Reed. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, and I apologize to anybody who's uh, maybe noticed I've been sitting here with my eyes closed this video. I'm having some real problems with my neural issues this evening. Uh, and I have my notes off here to the right. 
Um, so I'll try and get through this before Martin leaves. Uh, I love doing these albums that I'm not really a big fan of. So I'm coming to this as a extremely casual yes fan. Uh, and more than that, MTV Yes was the first yes that I ever heard. I never listened to Yes in the 70s. So the literal first yes song I ever heard was Owner of a Lonely Heart. Uh, and as a uh, confirmed heavy metal fan at the time, that song was right where it needed to be to get my attention. So I'm completely with Martin on the idea of heavy yes. Uh, and it's specifically from Trevor Rabin's grinding guitar sound that he adds to yes. And, you know, it's a contrarian opinion, but I find Trevor Rabin way more interesting than Steve Howe. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. Um, He's just, he's got that, it did not surprise me that he eventually became known as a cinema composer because he has this very panoramic view of music uh, when he composes. So uh, I was only familiar with the singles for years and years. And in fact, it was not until about 10 years ago that uh, we went to see a Yes concert where it was Yes and Asia and uh, they uh, a great tour with uh, Steve Howe performing with both bands. And after that, I got a set that had all of the albums up to Big Generator. And I realized that, yes, 90125 and Big Generator are still my favorite Yes albums. Uh, as a very casual fan and somebody who, you know, listening to these albums again in preparation for this show, um, I don't see a lot of daylight between these albums. I mean, I, I'm sure that if, if you're much of, more of a deep Yes fan, you can identify differences. But to me, they're really similar. They have very similar sounds. It's got the same drum sound. It's got the same guitar sounds. Uh, John Anderson, of course, always sounds exactly like John Anderson. It's got Trevor Horn's way, way, way too much production. Um, and like I said, that to me, these albums are like neck and neck. The biggest difference is that 90125 had better singles. Uh, Owner of a Lonely Heart and It Can Happen, I thought were great singles. And they're, they're catchier and better singles than what you got off of Big Generator. Now, um, to go back to Trevor Horn's production, uh, he was the master, perhaps the too much master of, of the studio as instrument, Right. When you hired Trevor Horn, you were hiring him to take over the sound of your product. And there's so much of that on this album, these little studio tricks, way too many parts. All of the songs, as I'm listening to it, I go, it just has too many parts. Um, and it's a thing that you get with a lot of, I, I consider this a very uh, uh, problematic of a lot of records in the late to mid eighties. Think David Bowie's tonight or lever never let me down. There's just too much studio in them. And the performances don't have a lot of, of room to breathe. There are some of these songs that sound like they've got a hundred keyboard parts. It's just little notes and stabs. Um, in addition to the vocal lines, so what stands out for me are individual things rather than entire compositions because they're so busy. Um, also, just as a, as a note, 87, Yes comes out with Rhythm of Love. 88, Scorpions come out with Rhythm of Love. Coincidence? I mean, yes, probably. I still just think it's funny. Um, <laughs> My, but again, my biggest issue is it's, it's too similar to 90125. And after a four-year wait, I wanted something more. And there's a real fine line because what most fans want from their music is they want the same but different, right? You want to know that your Coke isn't going to taste like Pepsi. But you don't want it to be too similar. There has to be some differences. And for me, there weren't enough differences. There weren't enough things that stood out. Uh, however, I still, I love John Anderson's vocals on it. I love Trevor Rabin's playing on it. And I'm going to be a little bit contrarian with some of the other panelists in that I love the first half of the album because those are actually the guitar heavy songs. 
Um, and I think the, the compositions are a little bit more folky and acoustic on the Baft half. And, and like, I know Martin loves his acoustic sounding uh, folkier songs. So it doesn't really surprise me that that would, that would appeal to him. Oh, sorry. I got too many computers I'm working with here. Um, for, for some specifics, Rhythm of Love, again, I think it's got an amazing solo, but other than that, it's okay, right? It's not fantastic. It's okay. Big Generator, again, too many studio tricks. Like there's a part in Big Generator where they go, move into the left. And as they sing that, the whole stereo image slides over to the left. If you're listening to it, you know, in headphones, the whole, the whole song slides over to the left and then it moves back to the center. And I'm like, oh, that's unnecessary and really distracting. That's just the kind of thing that you do when you spend two years in a studio working on an album, right? Um, I like Shoot High, Aim Low. Um, again, for the guitar, it's a, a guitar masterclass for Trevor Rabin. His parts on that are amazing. Uh, almost like love that song just slides in one ear and out the other. It's like, I listened to it just before the show starts. I can't tell you a thing about it. Um, finalize has a very nice vocal line, but again, too many parts. It's like four songs that are stapled together in order to make that song. And not all of the parts are equally good. And again, that becomes my critique of this album. It's, less than the sum of its parts. You, you go through it and you think, oh, it's got fantastic vocals. It's got some interesting lyrics. It's got wonderful guitar playing. It's got all this amazing production. And yet somehow all of that adds up to be less than an astoundingly great album. It's good. Um, I mean, there are no songs on it that I skip, but there are very few parts of it that I really love. Uh, I think it would have been tightened up considerably if, if they had had a different editor in place. I'm sorry, producer. <laughs> I often think of producers as musical editors. Now, uh, and uh, one last thought. Uh, I always say I don't care about the drama that goes into the production of an album. That's for the, for the musicians to experience, right? I don't want those vibes to color my experience of listening to an album. Because once you know the story of an album, you cannot help but have that influence you as you're listening to it. I want to hear it clean. And then later you can hear the story and go, Oh, well, that's interesting. But listen, I would not listen to it and go, Oh man, there was tons of drama in the band. I, I just wouldn't have gotten that. But my thing was overproduced, you know, too many parts in every song um, and too similar to 90125. But for all of that, I enjoy it. I just don't love it. I'm going to give it a six. Six. Nice scores. On average, we got a 6.3 out of 10. So that's a pretty good uh, in between rating. Marco, know... very, 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 very quickly before I know we're pushed for time. It's also interesting to note this is the first time where Trevor Holm is bigger than Yes because he'd already produced Grace Jones, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, ABC, and was having smash singles all over the place. So for the, first no time, you, for the first time, he could tell them no. He wasn't the new boy in class anymore, so it's the first time he could really say, no, sorry, I'm bigger than you guys for a change. So it's kind of interesting from that point of view as well. He's got a bit more clout than he would have on, on the last album. Yeah, good point, Davey. And um, thanks again for joining us, Davey. And Reed, I know we can find you here and on all the channels that everybody has already mentioned. And for the contrarians, you can like and subscribe us to help us grow. And thanks, everybody, for checking us out. And we'll see you next time. All right. See you guys Bye. later. Bye.